Good evening. This is suffrages for the night of the 13th of July, the commemoration of Nathan Zedeblum. In his book, The Nature of Faith, Gerhard Ebeling wrote, Listening to the word has the power to change the world as it did in the time of the Reformation. It was with the Reformation that something new took place in relation to the Bible, which lent to its interpretation an unheard of urgency and seriousness. It is not enough to see only a quantitative increase of interest, but there is something qualitatively new, which I should in simplified terms describe as a critical exposition of scripture. First, it is critical in contrast with the traditional view which held fast to certain dogmatic essentials, but within these limits left room for arbitrary and fantastic exegesis. In ecclesiastical usage, the Bible was so domesticated that it could not become a danger to the ecclesiastical system. While among heretics, though it occasioned all kinds of revolutions, these were like summer lightning, touching only single points, superficially and never breaking the spell of the basic traditional view. But in the Reformation, the Bible began to be critical at a deep level of the traditional view of the Christian faith, bringing about an upheaval from the very foundations. This was only apparently destructive and revolutionary. In reality, it was constructive from within, and this in sovereign fashion simply let the old view collapse. For it was on the basis of a new total understanding of faith that the all-transforming critical effects of scriptural exposition penetrated the farthest regions of the church and the world. Never before or after has the world been changed to such an extent by exposition of scripture. But second, the exposition of scripture was also critical of the dominant indiscipline of method. This is a sharp judgment, but it is justified if one considers the great hermeneutic revolution, that is, the change in the method of interpreting scripture which was introduced by the Reformation. But what is most stirring is that the exegesis of scripture became critical of scripture itself. If our opponents play scripture against Christ, Luther could say, then we play Christ against scripture. His well-known judgment on the epistle of James as an epistle of straw because Christ is not its subject was not a casual idea, but casts a vivid light on the scene. One must allow the individual passage of scripture to say what it says, but one cannot simply assert that it is the word of God. For the word of God is solely that which proclaims and communicates the will of God as revealed in the crucified Christ. Suffrages begins on page 328. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, 
for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, shepherd of your people, we thank you for your servant Nathan, who is faithful in the care and nurture of your flock. We pray that following his example and the teaching of his holy life, we may by your grace attain our full maturity in Christ, through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always.